Nier Automata is one of the most celebrated last generation action titles. The game marries Platinum Games' signature stylings with inventive, varied gameplay and a mind-bending narrative. But the game was beset by framerate and image quality issues on last-gen machines, with wobbly performance coupled with plenty of aliasing. Which is why the game's just-released Switch port came as a bit of a surprise when it was announced a few months ago. There's a huge performance gap between the Switch and even the base last-gen consoles and precious little room to cut resolution before image quality becomes unacceptably poor. This would seem like one of the so-called impossible ports, a technically demanding title downscaled for Nintendo's hybrid console, often with somewhat mixed results. But with Switch porting specialist Virtuos at the helm, perhaps expectation should be set a little bit higher. So is this a mobile miracle or a portable pain? Nier Automata was a technically challenging title on last-gen consoles. Despite relatively pedestrian visuals, the game targeted 900p without any anti-aliasing on base PS4 and Xbox One, with somewhat messy performance on both machines. 40 to 60 FPS was the typical run of play here, with combat and open-world traversal causing issues. It's important to keep this relatively poor showing in mind, because the Nintendo Switch falls far short of those machines in raw number crunching performance. This was a technically messy game that isn't typically the kind of last-gen title that fares well on Switch. So what kind of compromises are we seeing here? Relative to the base last-gen consoles, the Switch release is comprehensively downgraded, though the overall image still looks surprisingly comparable. Measuring the game up against its Xbox One counterpart, the first thing that really stands out is a significant reduction in texture detail. Across the board, textures are degraded with lower resolutions and simplified layers and material properties. In some areas, the textures look kind of soupy, with no fine detail to speak of, though most of the time it's not quite as severe. Foliage is pared back and altered to better fit the Switch. Trees and bushes feature much lower resolution alpha textures and have simplified layouts, appearing much less dense as a result. Grass density has only been mildly pared back, but curiously the 3D polygonal grass in the original versions of the game has been replaced with alpha-tested textures. It's a big change visually, but the results generally do look fine, although they do appear a little bit too bright when presented under shadowed regions. Lighting has been simplified to some degree. This is most clear with respect to the game's dynamic light sources, which are often stripped back or removed. In particular, most of the point lighting in background areas has been removed. Volumetric lighting also appears to be absent on Switch, or at least significantly scaled back. There are also some pretty significant differences in ambient lighting at times, though I have to imagine that tweaks to the global illumination system present on last-gen consoles, or possibly its removal, may be to blame. Most of the time, however, the two versions do look fairly similar in this regard. It's mostly the smaller scale details that seem to stand out when there are differences. Some of the geometric detail in the environments has been lost. This is occasionally quite obvious. These river rocks, for example, are much more numerous on last-gen console. Mostly though, the downgrades are small and only really stick out in side-by-side -side comparisons. Things like less rounded barrels here, or blockier debris on the ground. Particle effects are modestly scaled back as well. Fewer particles are spawned during explosions, sword hits, and dodges. In the heat of combat, this concession isn't too noticeable, but fights do appear a little bit less intense as a result. On the whole though, the Switch release mostly looks quite comparable to the last-gen console versions. While there are a litany of cuts, most don't particularly stand out when actually playing, and the game still looks and feels as it should. In some shots, these two machines are basically neck and neck, delivering slightly different looking but similarly capable versions of the same shot. There are also plenty of basic deficiencies that are apparent on both consoles to more or less the same degree. Pop-in is a major issue, with distant geometry often using a painfully simple LOD until the player gets quite close. Across both platforms, the higher detail LODs popped in at about the same distances across my testing, and the simplified assets appeared to be identical. Shadow resolution is quite low on Xbox One as well, with blocky outlines only slightly mitigated by soft filtering. The Switch surprisingly fares about the same, with a comparable treatment of shadow detail. 
There is no screen space ambient occlusion on either of the platforms, so geometry often looks flat and disconnected from the scene. On Switch this is perfectly understandable, but the same absence on Xbox One feels a little bit strange. There is one major settings advantage that the Switch release does have, however. The Switch version of Nier Automata comes packaged with anti-aliasing. The anti-aliasing coverage doesn't particularly impress and gives the impression of a simple post-process technique, but it does exceed the last-gen versions on base consoles which inexplicably lack anti-aliasing. In areas with a lot of distant detail or fine foliage, the Switch often exhibits better image stability than Xbox One. Some shots do look substantially softer though, which ultimately comes down to the Switch's resolution setup. In docked mode, the Switch aims for a 1080p resolution, which is actually higher than the last-gen base consoles. Some shots do count a little bit below that figure, but in most screenshots with some form of countable detail, you can find 1080p edges. However, the resolve throughout any given shot does tend to vary quite a bit, especially during movement, and there are some stippling artifacts on certain edges, suggesting that a form of reconstruction may be in play. Post-processing appears to run at full resolution, while geometry looks soft and imprecise with some artifacting, but often resolves at 1080p in still shots. While stationary, you can observe some slightly distracting pixel shifting at times as well, which is possibly a byproduct of reconstruction. The Xbox One X version did use a form of checkerboarding to hit a 4K resolution, but the resolve here does look quite a bit different. The One X suffered from extremely obvious checkerboard artifacts on close inspection, with a lot of image breakup, while the image on Switch tends to be better behaved. The portable mode adopts a similar setup, but this time the target resolution is 720p. Compared side by side, the image does resolve less clearly than in the docked mode, but obviously on the Switch's screen it does hold up much better. It looks reasonably sharp and clean on the internal display most of the time, although sometimes it does look a little bit soft, and a lot of scenes really pop on the Switch OLED panel in particular. Outside of resolution, it seems to be a match for the docked mode in terms of visual settings as well. So how does performance shake out? Virtuos has sensibly cut the frame rate target here from 60 FPS on last gen home consoles to 30 FPS here. 60 FPS was a challenge on exponentially more capable hardware, so the reduced frame rate was probably inevitable. At first I was very impressed with the performance level. Yes, this is a 30 FPS game, but it did feel remarkably consistent. Essentially a locked 30 FPS with stable frame pacing for the first hour or so of gameplay. I did notice a drop or two while playing, but these were very minor. My only issue at this point was the lack of any sort of motion blur, which a 30 FPS action game with a lot of melee combat like this could really make good use of. The cutscenes, which are a mix of pre-encoded and real-time sequences, also play back perfectly well. But as I continued to play, the picture got less rosy. Small framerate hitches became more common, particularly when traversing sections of the open world and when fighting enemies. It was still quite consistent, but these small interruptions were definitely noticeable. When Automata drops frames, the framerate cap momentarily doesn't work as it should, so you get a mix of 16, 33, and 50 millisecond frames, instead of just 33 and 50 millisecond frames as would typically be the case. As I closed up my time with the Switch release of Nier Automata, however, more pronounced framerate issues became fairly common. Some of the larger fights mostly played out in sub-30 FPS territory, and hung in the low to mid-20s at worst. A handful of environments also caused extended framerate issues. I played the game for over a dozen hours, long enough to get past the sequence around the first ending, where some of the more taxing fights in the game are located. Overall though, I do think that the performance level is reasonable, considering the hardware and the relatively strong quality of the visuals compared to last gen home consoles. 30 FPS is the norm, with momentary dips that don't detract too much from the experience. It's really the larger battles that can prove seriously problematic, though this is hardly representative of the majority of the action. Portable mode seems to quit itself about as well, with good performance overall with occasional sub-30 FPS moments. 
My impression is that the frame rate level here is perhaps a little bit more consistent though, with fewer drops in general play. A small handful of Switch titles have leveraged new technology to breathe life into older games. Alien Isolation, Metro 2033, and Metro Last Light are perhaps the best examples, with the addition of TAA arguably transforming them into the best looking console versions of those titles. New rendering techniques can indeed ratchet up image quality to the point where Switch releases can visually outperform much more powerful hardware. Near Automata on Switch isn't quite at that level of quality, but the same principles still apply. The original releases of Near Automata in 2017 and 2018 had a pretty basic rendering setup, with no reconstruction tricks or even anti-aliasing, at least on the base console platforms. But here we do have anti-aliasing, plus what seems to be a form of reconstruction, plus we get other custom tailored changes to the visuals, like the replacement of the polygonal grass. Clearly a lot of time and effort was invested into making this port shine. By leveraging new tech, Virtuos has reworked the game to the point where it looks similar to the Xbox One and PS4 versions of the game overall, and can even look a little bit better at times. Performance isn't perfect, but it is quite good, and it does manage to maintain a 30fps update through most gameplay. So the Switch port of Nier Automata is quite impressive. Smart visual concessions, along with new rendering tech, combine to create a modernized version of this game that manages to run perfectly well on the Switch's aging mobile hardware. Automata is a modern action classic that is well worth experiencing and Nintendo's hybrid console offers a smartly optimized reinterpretation that works great on the go. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfoundry.net for exclusive and early access content, and to get in touch, just use Twitter. Thanks for watching.